Lord God, for a few moments tonight. And then I want us to come in with great faith. Amen. Expecting God to work and move in our needs and situations. Amen. Thanks to Beth. I'll call you back in about 10 minutes. Amen. I like what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. He wrote, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are. That no flesh should glory in His presence. But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made, up, made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. Do you know tonight the kind of things that God uses? Amen. Whatever our situations are tonight, whatever we are facing, whatever things that we're expecting God to work and move in, and the expectation of God to work and move in us, amen, we are flawed individuals, amen, that have the ability to be used by a flawless God. Amen. 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 God chooses the weak things. Amen. He uses His weakness. Amen. His strength to man. Amen. His things that doesn't seem like wisdom are wise to man. God knows what he, use, he has the ability to use. Amen. So tonight I just want us for a few moments to think about this, that our God is great. Amen. To the pulling down of strongholds. Our God is great to the fulfilling of visions and dreams. Our God is great in working in men and women's lives. Amen. You seem to be men and women who are not able to do it on their own. Amen. But God, amen, gives the ability. Amen. So in turbulent days, amen, we cannot lose our spiritual vision to do something great for God. Amen. I, I'm thinking of a man tonight who's not afraid to be used, and his name was David. David, amen, the Bible, when it speaks of David, amen, he was a young shepherd boy, amen, his father, Jesse, had sent him to his brothers to, de de to deliver some parched corn and some bread, but when he comes on the scene, amen, he sees that there's a great big giant named Goliath. Amen. I know that we're familiar with the story, but let's look a little closer tonight. Amen. Let's look at things that maybe aren't so obvious to us. So as he's delivering this food, here is this Goliath who comes away, uh, comes to our body, wants to bring a reproach to Israel. And David said, who is it that will take away the reproach of Israel? Amen. Uh, his brother Eliab, amen, says, David, uh, our dad sent you down here to deliver some food. Don't come down here being uh, full of nonsense. Don't come down here with big hopes and dreams and ideas. Amen. Uh, just don't do it. And so, David, he said, listen, I know that you're accusing me of pride and naughtiness of heart, but I will see God work and move. So I, 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 I want to see God do something. First of all, David realized, number one, he had some spiritual insight. Is there not a cause? Amen. Sickness in the building, is there not a cause for God to touch and heal? Spiritual warfare in the building, is there not a cause to stand in the fight? Amen. And trust the Lord for the pulling down the strongholds. Amen. Is there not tonight something that God wants to work and move? Amen. How great 
is our God. Some spiritual insight. No one else seemed to look at it. No one else seemed to know what God could do. Amen. With a life that was surrendered unto God. But David said, I know what God will do. Amen. And I believe that it's going to be uh, 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 God's battle, not mine. The struggle is between good and evil. Amen. And I believe that, uh, uh, that, that evil can be overtaken by the greatness of God. Amen. Evil can be put to flight. Amen. So David had some spiritual vision to see what could be done. And so uh, I uh, we also know that not only did he have spiritual insight, but he had spiritual hindsight. He had been taking care of his father's sheep. Amen. And if you read there in uh, 1 Samuel uh, uh, 17, uh, you'll see that, that he's aware that, that God has already worked and moved in his life when no one else was around. He already conquered the lion and the bear. Amen. God sees your prayers and you pray in private. God sees the life that you're living, that you're trying to be faithful to Him. Amen. So all those things that you've already conquered in private, no one saw the lion, no one saw the bear. Amen. But David knew what God could do. Amen. And so in hindsight, he knew that God could do publicly. Amen. With Him, what God had done privately with Him. Amen. How many folks here, you've been living for God. You don't have to raise your hand. I'm simply questioning you. You've been living for God. You've been praying. Amen. You know what God has been doing in your personal life so that you know what God can do in your life publicly. Amen. God's about to conquer a giant. Amen. This ain't no big thing for God. God's already been faithful in things that have seemed like big things when I was all by myself. I'm out of there, but God was faithful. Amen. I'm ready to conquer the giant. Spiritual hindsight. Amen. The Goliaths of this world. Amen. Amen. Have to be killed. Amen. The saints of God. Amen. Have to learn how to handle the lions and the bear before they can ever conquer the giants. Amen. You're struggling. You want to be in battle. You want to fight. You want to conquer. Amen. There may be some lions. There may be some bears. Amen. For folks here that need to be conquered tonight. But that's big stuff. Amen. Things that you do personally. Amen. Things in your life that you conquer. Amen. And then God gives you the ability because you've been faithful in those things. God allows you to be able to conquer the, 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 the Goliaths. Amen. He was living victorious. And he was living right when no one else was watching. And then David had some spiritual foresight. Amen. He knew this. Saul so said, Here, use my armor. He said, that's not what's been tried and proven. That's not what I'm familiar with. But what I'm familiar with is the slingshot. Amen. I have some spiritual uh, a foresight to know that if this is going to happen, it's not going to happen with your armor, I saw. It's going to happen with what I know has been proven and true. So out comes uh, uh, Goliath and he said to, to David, he said, I'll take your flesh and I'll feed it to the fowls of the air. I, I, I'll take care of you. Amen. And David said, wait a second. I, 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 I know that you come with, to me with spear and sword, but I'm coming tonight against you in the name of the Lord. Amen. My battle is not a physical battle, but this spiritual, this is a spiritual battle. Some folks may look and think that what we're engaged in is a physical thing. Amen. Uh, when, when we have situations in our body that arise and we need to be healed, we we have problems in our life that arise that need to be taken care of, whether they're financial or whether they're things that, 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 that don't have to do with other people or whether they do have to do with other people. Amen. Uh, the battle tonight is not physical on its own, but the battle tonight is spiritual. Amen. So we have to get the spiritual insight to know that this battle is only going to be won. Amen. As God moves in this and gives me the victory. There's all kinds of voices that will yell up to you that you're going to be overtaken. You're going to be left to hang out to dry. You're going to be left to the fowls of the air. Amen. Just to pick away at. Amen. But God has not designed you for that. Amen. God has designed you for a battle. Amen. That's not of your cause, but it is of His cause. Amen. This battle that you're engaged in tonight, it may feel like it's your battle. Amen. It may feel like it's something that you want or you need or that you're hopeful for. But the reality of it is, is God has set you in this setting because the battle is His and He's wanting to fight the battle through you so that His name can be glorified. Amen. Yes. Amen. Is there not a cause? Amen. The cause is the kingdom of God and to grow the kingdom of God for many people to come to the same knowledge of Jesus Christ. David fought the battle. Amen. Because the battle was 
for God's cause. It was God's people that needed vindication. It was God's people that needed to see that God was still working in the face of battle. Amen. God's still working, my friend. God's still moving. The causes for the kingdom of God. But I find that God works with the man and the woman that gives all. Do you remember in John chapter number 6 that there was a multitude who followed Jesus and He went to the Sea of Galilee because their folks needed to be ministered to. There was miracles that was taking place. There was teaching that was being done. So that as he was there and he was on the mountain, he realized that there was a multitude of people that was there and they were getting hungry. And uh, can we go to town? We don't have enough money. 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for everybody. But you know what? There was one man. Hey Amen. I've got to tell you, there's some things about this story that I admire. There was one man named Andrew. He wasn't boisterous like his brother. Hey Amen, Peter. But here was Andrew. He was around getting the crowd type fella and get out there and minister. It wasn't about being on the platform. It wasn't about being seen. It was about getting out there and getting the needs of people met. Amen. And there he was. Amen. God help us tonight to be the type of men and women to get out there and meet the needs of people. And there he was that he found a little boy who was willing not to give a fish and a couple of loaves but was willing to give everything. Brought him to Jesus. You know the story. Jesus began to bless them and break them. And the next thing that we know is that the multitudes are fed. And we have a problem on our hands. There are 12 baskets left over. I'm telling you tonight how great is our God. We sometimes struggle with surrendering everything in our life to God. We sometimes struggle with giving to God the way that God requires of us to give and, 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 and to bless Him. Do you know what? How about it's time that we allow the Spirit of God to minister to us where we say, God, I will give you all. I'm not holding back, but I'm giving you everything. It would have been easy for that little boy to say, I'm keeping hold of a little fish. I'm keeping hold of a loaf of bread. I need this for me. But he was willing to give everything. He said, wait a second, God. I'm willing to give you everything. Everything of my all. I want to challenge you tonight. We're singing about how great is our God. What is the need? What is the area of your life? Amen. That you still want to hold on to a part of and to surrender every area of God and say, God, this is yours for your use and for your glory. This is not about me tonight. Amen. This is about building your kingdom. This is about whatever I have to give that the needs of others can be multiplied and met through what little bit that I have. Amen. And then all of a sudden I see this situation where there are 12 left over. Now I know there's a multitude of people and in the multitude of people there's always a few that say, let me fill up my pockets and see what I can get out of this. But I have to wonder I have to wonder, Brother David, did that tour of baskets, did Jesus say out with a voice say, you can take this back home. This is yours. Go show your mom and dad what Jesus did. Amen. How great is our God. How great. Amen. I just have that sense tonight. What is it that we need to surrender to God every part? Amen. The battle. Amen. Sister Beth, if you want to come back. Sister Holly, if you want to come back. Amen. What is it tonight in our life? Amen. The Spirit of God is working and moving. And I'm not here in any way to be derogatory or, or to make someone feel I mean, If that's your sense, amen, allow the Spirit of God to rise up. That's not the sense. My sense is that God wants us to be surrendered to Him in every area. And God wants us to be faithful when no one else is watching. Because there's where the lion and bear is slain. Some of us here have some lions and bears that need to be slain. 
No one else may see it. I want to give you affirmation. It's okay. Because they're coming a season where there's going to be a Goliath that God needs you to conquer. And when you've been faithful behind closed doors, amen, God is going to use you in such a way openly, amen, that it is going to show folks that God is still the God of battle. Amen? Amen. And then there's some folks, you have been faithful, and Goliath is trying to provoke. Amen. Amen. And here it is. Big Brother may say, you're prideful. Go home. Do your job. Go home. Amen. But you see that there is a cause. Amen. And I'm going to fight for the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to stand up for Jesus. Amen. Whether it's in my workplace, whether it's in the community, wherever it is, I'm standing up for Jesus. If it's in my family, I'm going to stand up for what is right. Amen. Because there is a cause and I'm fighting this battle. Some of you need to be the Andrew that says I'm willing to go about and find whatever can be found for God to work and move into me. I'm not worried about the platform. I'm just worried about being used by God. And then some of us need to be a little boy that says, I'm letting go. God, every bit of it is yours. Every bit. Every bit is yours. I think some folks may go home with 12 basketballs tonight. If you let go. If you let go. God, this voice is yours. God, my home is yours. God, my finances, it's yours. God, my family, it's yours. God, my time, it's yours. Whatever it is tonight, those may not even be your specifics. Amen. But God is saying, I want this. It's time that you let go and let loose and say, God, this is yours. You break it. You bless it. And you use it for the glory of your kingdom. And so I'm giving it to you, God. Amen. Who knows? Your basket may be greater than 12. I don't know. It's not the worry about the basket. It's about the surrender that God uses you. Amen. Do you think God's great enough to do that tonight? Amen, I do. Amen. Do I have some folks that says, I'm going to be the man or woman that's used of God. I'm going to have some hindsight. I'm going to have some spiritual insight. And I'm getting some spiritual foresight for this. Ah, oh, God's going to be glorified in this. While others are just letting go and saying, Whatever, God, it's yours. I'm done. I took longer than my 10 minutes. My apologies. But now it's time for the Spirit of God to flow into the sanctuary. Folks to come and cry around the altar. Folks to come and stand around the altar. Folks to throw up their hands and surrender to God. Amen. Tonight, this is about God. So, Sister Holly, you come. The altars are open. I've given what God has laid upon my heart. Amen. Now it's your opportunity to take it. Amen. Simply because God has placed me here as the man of God to give the word. Amen. Now it's your opportunity to run with it. Amen. Run with it. See what God will do in your life. Sister Holly. Hallelujah. Let's get